The biggest challenge you face when you begin following a healthy diet is trying to figure out exactly what foods you should eat without getting sucked into all the wrong information floating around on the internet. The top foods that I'm about to share with you are going to be the key foods that you should eat if you want to positively influence every health marker in your body. The chronic illness plague has stripped anyone living in modern society of their most valuable asset, that being your health. And there's no doubt it's brought on by the foods that you eat. Modern society now represents the least healthy, most chronic disease ridden, most prescription drug ridden, most overweight, least physically fit, anxious and depressed humans that have ever walked the earth. The good news is that there's a silver lining to all of this, and that is you're able to turn this around starting today by making better choices in the foods that you eat. Your body is infinitely intelligent and always striving for good health. All you have to do is put the right nutrients in and make better choices in your food and your body will do the rest. It's truly incredible when you think about it. And that is why the no carb, no sugar food list that I'm about to discuss will be the absolute foundation to your good health. I'm going to start with the healthy fats and then we'll go into the proteins and the vegetables and we'll break it down categorically so it all makes sense. The top fats on our no sugar, no carb food list are as follows. The first is going to be coconut oil. Then we're looking at medium chain triglyceride oil. You could also use an MCT powder, which I prefer because it causes much less digestive upset and it's not quite as messy. Extra virgin olive oil, grass fed butter, ghee, tallow, and lard. Now, whenever using any of the animal fats, it's always best practice to use grass fed because the grass fed has an omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, which is much closer to that of the human body. And when you don't use grass fed, it can have a much higher omega-6 content, which can spike an inflammatory reaction in the body and also cause symptoms like brain fog. These fats are healthy and required for our body and our brain to function properly. For years, people were taught that if you ate fat, you became fat and it's actually quite the opposite. Fats are insulin neutral, meaning that they barely even have an effect on insulin or blood sugar. They don't raise them up at all. And this is important because high blood sugar and high insulin is a characteristic of heart disease, diabetes, and a lot of health problems that you don't wanna face. Fats have been research proven to increase satiety and help you stay full longer. They've also shown to reduce the cravings for high sugar foods. When you don't consume enough fats throughout the day, essentially you become hungry, and there's a good chance that you're gonna fill that void with high carb, high sugar foods. So take some oil and use them on your salads, on your meats, put MCTs in your coffee or even in your tea, and you'll immediately notice a huge change in the foods that you crave throughout the day. Now let's take a look at our proteins that are no carb, no sugar proteins. On our list, we have beef, chicken, lamb, and also fish. When consuming fish, my favorite are to consume ones that are high in fatty acids. And these fish are salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and also herring. Now, like fat, protein also has very minimal effect on both your blood sugar and your insulin response. Now, there's a really important concept that I want you to understand. Every food that you eat will have a physiological impact on your body. And that's why using the model of calories in versus calories out is totally broken. I mean, sure, you can stay skinny that way, but your health will suffer. I have patients who are skinny, but they have an autoimmune disorder. They're skinny, but they have an inflammatory condition or maybe even have cancer. Processed sugar-filled foods will create hormone imbalance and will create really unhealthy lab markers. Eating these low carb, no sugar foods will create balance and health in your body. And this is why these no sugar, no carb foods are so important to your overall health. Now let's take a look at some no carb, no sugar drinks that you can consume. First of all, we'll start off with water. And that one's kind of obvious. But other ones that you may not know about are sparkling water, coffee, black tea, green tea, 
and apple cider vinegar. And it just so happens to be that these are all the same drinks that you can consume while fasting and it will not break your fast. So everything I just mentioned is 100% no carb, no sugar. These are going to be really key foods in your diet, but eating only these foods is obviously way too strict to be sustainable long-term. So now let's go ahead and talk about some other foods that you can eat that have such low carb content within them that its impact is negligible. Let's first take a look at some of the low carb vegetables that you can include into your diet. But let me say this before we get started. Maybe Make sure that you're being creative in the way that you're eating your vegetables because there's a lot of really good fun ways to eat them. I'll try to share a few as I go through them. First on our list is going to be spinach. Now spinach is great in a salad, but another way that I incorporate a lot of it into my life is by putting it in smoothies. You can get a lot in and it tastes really good. Next on our list is going to be lettuce. Then we have avocados. Now, avocados, I know that that's technically a fruit, but we're just gonna throw it in the vegetable category since everybody considers it that. A great way to incorporate an avocado every day is just use it as a snack. Cut it in half, sprinkle it in sea salt, and eat it with a spoon. It's really good that way. We have olives next, and then we also have broccoli. Now, broccoli, I mean, you can eat it steamed. You can throw it on a salad. One of the ways that we just started eating it in our house and we really like it is you put it in the oven, you put some healthy fat on it, and then also sprinkle it in sea salt and roast it solid that way. Try it out, you'll love it. We also have bell peppers. And you know, bell peppers are really good when you stuff them with you know, some meat and some cheese and, and then cook them, awesome that way. We have tomatoes on our list here. One of the things I started doing with tomatoes recently is just slicing them up and putting a really good seasoning on them, phenomenal. Now, we also are gonna go into zucchinis, okay? Zucchinis can be used for so many things. Growing up, I thought it was like the most worthless garden plant that ever existed, because you got tons of them and everybody wanted to get rid of them. Well, you can make zucchini noodles. You can make zucchini boat pizzas. You can make so many really good things with it. Look up all the ways to use zucchini. You'll be really impressed. On our list next, we have mushrooms. You know, you can saute them, you can throw them in an omelet, you can use them as, you know, a topping for meat. So many ways to use them. Cauliflower, I mean, definitely a staple in our house. I mean, if it's not mashed cauliflower, it's using it for a pizza crust, you can rice it, you can do so many good things with it. And so don't ever um, ignore how useful that could actually be. Uh, cabbage is another big one. In our house, I like to make sauerkraut with it. It's, it's something that you can make very easily, inexpensive, and also it's a fermented food, so it has all that good benefit for your gut health. Next on our list, we have eggplant. Now, there's really nothing better than eggplant parmesan. Give that a try if you've never done that. So there's so many good ways to use all these vegetables. And loading up on vegetables is a really, really good way to help you keep your health in check. You need the nutrients from it, you need the fiber from it, and it's very, Good for you. Now, what about fruits, right? Fruits are unhealthy, they're full of sugar, and you should never eat them. Not at all. In fact, fruits are micronutrient dense, and there's actually some low carb, low sugar fruits that are fine in moderation. These fruits include strawberries, blackberries, raspberries, and blueberries. They make a great healthy dessert, and sometimes it's good just to have them around to take the edge off whenever you get a sweet craving when you're trying to eat healthy. As you start to really understand the foods that you can eat, you realize quickly that eating healthy is not as far out of reach as you once imagined that it was. Eating a no carb, no sugar diet is really important for improving and maintaining good health. Now let's take a look at a food that is really good for snacking, and that is nuts and seeds that are low in carbs. Arms. As we look to seeds, a few that we can have are chia seeds, flax seeds, pumpkin, and also hemp seeds. They're all great for snacks. Now some nuts that you can have would be macadamia nuts, walnuts, and also pecans. They're all very low in carbs. Not saying that the other ones are unhealthy, it's just that these ones in particular are low in carb. Now, whenever consuming any of these seeds and nuts, it's very important to make sure that you don't overdo it. It's easy to grab a bag and just eat a whole bunch of them all at once, but they're very burdensome to the gut. So whenever eating the nuts and seeds, go light and don't overdo it. Now, two foods that I have not mentioned yet, which are a huge staple on any low carb diet are going to be 
me eggs and cheese. As we look at eggs, it's considered a perfect food. It has a good balance of amino acids, fats, and also vitamins in it. And cheese is the same. It's a balance of protein and fats, and it also has nutrients that are very beneficial to your health. Incorporating more of these foods that I just mentioned will 100% make you healthier. These are also staple foods if you're following the ketogenic diet or any low carb lifestyle. When transforming your diet from an unhealthy one to a healthy one, be sure to make lateral shifts. Don't restrict yourself from all the foods that you used to love. Find ways to incorporate them into your diet today, but find healthier alternatives. For instance, if you love pasta, well, ditch the wheat noodles, but use a zucchini noodle instead. If you like pizza, make a cauliflower crust keto pizza. It really is good. And if you're someone who likes soda, for instance, you can get a stevia sweetened soda, a erythritol sweetened soda, and you can enjoy it just the same. This is the great thing about eating healthy today that used to not exist. You can find pretty much a healthier alternative to every unhealthy food that you used to love. If you have cravings for sweets, Use sweeteners like stevia, monk fruit, and also erythritol. They taste sweet in the mouth, but they don't raise your blood sugar or your insulin levels. Remember to focus on critical elements of good health, like exercise and good sleep. And remember that eating healthy is just one piece of the puzzle, but in order to see the full picture, we have to incorporate all the things that are required to make us healthy. Don't get frustrated and quit when you mess up your diet. Refocus, recalibrate, reset, and get back on track. Remember, this struggle is just all part of the journey. Don't expect your diet to become perfect overnight. Set reasonable expectations, and remember, this is an ongoing process. On Instagram recently, I was asked, at what age did you become healthy? Though I started in my early 20s, Health is a moving target, and I'm still working to improve my health today. As always, I'm Dr. Zorowski, and it's been a pleasure educating you on how you can improve your health naturally. I highly recommend you watch this video next.